So usually when I'm quiet, I'm either very concentrated, but in this case, I'm very much enjoying. Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Nürburgring of course and welcome to one of the most kind of iconic cars for the Nürburgring, one of the very popular cars for the Nürburgring that we'll be driving today thanks to Matteo here. How are you doing? Good, thank you yourself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, especially after we already have driven it, traditionally wise, we drive the car first to make sure that we can make it to the track and then we do the intro. So. Clio RS Cup 200. Yeah, so like a Cup 200 pack. Um, so still got conventional uh, automatic climate control, cruise control and all the, yeah. the good features for long road trips over from the UK. Nice. Um, additional bits I've done are recently the coilovers. So we've got BC, BC racing coilovers. All right. Um, 10 kilo front spring, seven kilo rear springs. Um, and then obviously just upgraded discs and pads. So Frodo. DS 1.1s and All right. PBS Pro race in the rear. Nice. What, what disc are you running? Uh, J Hooks from Godspeed. Cool. So power wise, it's fully stock. You even said that you put it on a dyno with 196-ish. 196, 196 yeah. yeah. Cool, but you will see it in a bit how easy this car is to handle and to control and with just like relatively minor mods. I mean, of course, when you're going to track the car, you should upgrade the brake suspension, etc. But this is you will find out why it's such a popular machine because in terms of budget and the amount of value that you get in return, I don't think there is any car that can match to it. Six uh, speed gearbox, we only use six gear once, I believe. And that's going to be like a viewing assignment to you to find out where it was. I didn't upshift to six in Schwedenkreuz. Um, yeah, and overall, exhaust is stuck or? Uh, so non-res with decat. Okay. Um, so that's why it's really loud. Why it's loud. No, no, that's good yeah. to know. Good to know. No, it's amazing. Was there anything else that we missed and we should mention? Some uh, special shout outs to someone helped build, build you the car or something. So uh, partly my dad and a, a lovely chap called uh, Paul um, sort of helped put it all together. So Nice. Yeah. That's, that's very good. That, that makes me appreciate the car even more when it's built by family and friends. Well, thanks again for this experience. No problem at all. And you guys, enjoy the lap. I almost even forgot to turn on the cameras. That would have been a fun lap. <laughs> yeah, anything I should know. No, I'll put it in my pocket, otherwise I'll forget it at some point and then it's going to be a fun story. Um, anything I should know about the car before we proceed? Uh, not that. What well, was the traction control button? Uh, the far right, there's a little hazard. Uh, uh -huh, there you I go, see. yeah. There we yeah, go. it just likes to slide around at the rear is all I'd say. But... All right. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> Definitely driving it faster at some point. Than I <laughs> yeah, no, I absolutely love it. For me, yeah. it's like one of the best platforms there is. Yeah. Because the, I always said this is the budget GT3 or GT3 RS. Yeah. The amount of emotion that you hear the, the car is making, that's like really, like really good. Okay, we will save the verdict for the last two corners. popular for what you get in return, the emotion, the handling, Clio Cup, which is of course this car as well. Yeah. It's extremely popular car, they were super popular here as well for the price value or like um, what's it called, value for money that you get in return when it comes to the race car because it wasn't expensive, the light, the cheaper maintenance, yeah. like I think you're replacing gearbox synchros more often than brake discs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's an amazing car and what is like the rough value without the mods nowadays for uh for the like rs 200 i think if we go for sort of a nice one probably five and a half six to six thousand that's really is, yeah. really doable yeah you can probably like get two baskets of bananas at the, at the grocery store nowadays for that money <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> with all the current prices i mean i bought this one um stock apart from the exhaust and it cost me four thousand plus yeah. all the stuff i've done to it so wow it just shows the you know sort what's of the mileage that you had uh, 102 uh, miles, uh, so it's like 160,000 kilometers or so. Yeah. And stock uh, engine? Yeah, stock engine, just a uh, just a remap. Okay. Um, just for the, to get rid of the flat spot. Yeah. But yeah. It was, it was dyno 196. Uh huh. Two, so less than the so-called factory. But for for the amount of mileage it's got on it. Yeah, for the amount of mileage, and I mean you could take maybe weather into account or some other uh, factor ratio, but yeah, it's it, it's still good. Again, it's the emotion, it's the handling. I love this car. I jump into it. I, I haven't driven like this is probably second, I think, or a right hand drive car for me in the last half a year. Yeah. Um, manual as well, but it's so confident. Like you put semi slicks on it and suspension and this and brakes and you're done. Like, yeah. Third gear boxing, uh, third, third gear synchros is a good thing to do as well for the yeah. future. But I mean, in terms of trackability, it becomes such a pleasant car. And as mentioned during the lap, it's a good wet car like in the wet this car is like a proper weapon because again it's light and you can the pedal position is good you can do learn heel and toe with it left foot braking whatever you want to and most importantly yeah budget for as a beginner's track car i don't think it gets much better than this yeah. you can argue of course an mx5 but i think miatas went also through the roof in prices nowadays you pay like eight or nine or even ten grand for a for a Miata, which is for what you get in return, of course, you can consider it being worth it. But this front wheel drive car, more forgiving. So, yeah, and now we finally have seen why it's it is the case why they are so popular. Because, as mentioned, we had two Clios at Apex, but unfortunately, both got absolutely destroyed within, I think, first or second week. So, I shot a video with one of them saying, like, Hey, look, first lap. Uh, and I haven't posted that video, and by the time I actually edited it, the cars got destroyed. I'm like, well, that makes no sense of posting it. I mean, come drive our new car, which is in 20,000 pieces in a junk car. So I'm really happy that I got the opportunity now, thanks to you. I'm sorry. So thanks a lot. So I hope I wasn't too hard on you, baby. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> definitely know I can go faster now. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> There, you can go a lot, uh, a lot of things because uh, I try not to overdrive the cars that are not mine, of course. Some people might disagree. Uh, but uh, when it comes to braking, I always like to have enough safety margin. Yeah. So I know that with this car, there was a lot of, uh, you could brake so much later, 
but I don't like to, to, to do these tryouts to see like, hmm, uh, how much later can we break with a car that's not mine, you know? Yeah. This was well within the limits, within the comfort zone, and that was great. So thanks so much. No